years, little Shungile, who is now nearly 15 months old, no, 14 and a half months old. So she's actually still very, very young, just over a year. And Shungile's name means beautiful. And she is, for the first time, having to learn all about what her life's going to be like as an adult. Because unlike those elephants that you saw, leopards are completely solitary. So they live by themselves unless they are mating with a male or a female, and unless they have cubs. And she's now on her own for now, and she's been having to look after herself. And that's one of the reasons why she comes to the water here. Because, of course, lots of animals come to the water to drink, but also because she's got very, very good at catching terrapins, which is a mixture between turtles and tortoises. Well, thank goodness we stayed here with the gorgeous Shungile, because otherwise we actually might not have seen her, because apparently it's time for all of you to start heading back on your school day. So thank you very much to Independence Middle School for joining us. I hope you guys had fun, and I hope you enjoyed sending us through your questions. Go and enjoy the rest of your school day, and hopefully I will see you very shortly. <laughs> she is over there posing like a little princess hopefully with a belly full of terrapins now apparently all of you have been watching her throughout the afternoon on the, the damn camera which for those of you that don't know is a 24-hour live streaming camera that's set up here by this waterhole at this waterhole and Shungile has become the terror of terrapins that is the way in which she's actually been surviving and I have to say she looks much better than when I last saw her, which I'm really thrilled about. She definitely doesn't look as thin, and she almost looks as though she's gained a little bit of that confidence that she seemed to have lost. Now, the wonderful thing about Shungila, of course, is sitting with her is not only that we love her, but also because she's actually constantly active. There she goes, what's there? There she's up and looking across, she just heard something. Oh, Annie, you say you've been watching the waterhole. Ooh, there's something I've just noticed now. She's sitting happily there, but on the other side of the dam, sorry, we'll talk about what Shungile has been up to in a moment. On the other side of the dam is a leopard's arch nemesis, which is the baboons. And if we go across, let's just have a look there, Senzo. They're behind the impala, sorry. <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting a bit of a cameo, sorry, just to show the baboons. <laughs> there we go. And they're the baboons. Now she definitely wants to stay out of their way. That is not an animal that she wants to encounter. So hopefully they don't decide to come in this direction. I wonder if they know she's here. I don't think so. There's a very good chance that if they did, they would chase her. I think she's large enough at this point that she would know exactly what to do and how to escape. But it is a possibility for any leopard. And a big male baboon, if there's more than one big male baboon, they can actually do some truly serious damage and they could potentially harm her if they can catch her. And that, of course, is where she has the true advantage. But leopards and baboons are not friends at all. We've had some truly fascinating and terrifying sightings of baboons chasing leopard cubs. Tandi, of course, jumps to mind, but also Hosanna and Shungile. But for now, they're distracted with their foraging on the opposite side of the dam. Oh, there they are. All right, let's go back to Shungile. We were talking about what Shungile has been up to throughout the day. Apparently, she has been here all day, and that Henny was saying that she's completely lost track of how many terrapins Shungile has pulled out of the water. That's what I'm saying. She's become the terror of terrapins. And she's so clever because she goes wandering from waterhole to waterhole. She's such a little survivor. Oh, oh, yes. Go, girl. Go, girl. And slinking away. That's the baboon that she spotted. She knew that they were there. She was keeping an eye on them. And up she goes. There's a good girl. Oh. 
Here come the baboons across the damn wall. Oh, just for now, I'm going to sit here. I don't want to reposition yet. I want to make sure that she is fully aware of what's happening around her. Okay, the baboons stopped running. Look at that swagger. Male baboons have such a swagger about them. Marching across the damn wall. They just look like they mean trouble. I mean, I, baboons are fascinating. They're highly entertaining and highly intelligent, but they really do look like trouble. This is the massive gentleman with a size 7 shoes, Senzor, with a huge footprint. We laugh about it every time we see it. We keep joking it's Brent walking on the road. Here he goes. We just got to sit. We're just going to sit. Shungile. I'm hoping that she's moved further in. Don't want to see her getting chased by a baboon. But it could happen if they carry on around this corner. I don't think they will though. So I'm hoping they're going to stay around the drainage line. There goes the other baboon. Right, I think it's okay. I think the male baboon has actually moved onto the other side of the damn wall, which means that we can reposition. And we can go and just have a look and see where Shungile is. See how quick she is, how clever she is. As soon as the baboon started walking in this direction, she immediately dropped down to her belly and sidled off into the bushes. And I'm sure she's hiding just through here. I'm going to go and find her, but while I do, let's head over to James on foot. <laughs> 